couple of links down below to the patch notes if you want to read them on your own and some information on the first season starting on July 20th. So for gameplay, fixed an issue where the damage multiplier for enhanced frozen orb wasn't applying correctly. It was too hot, you know, global warming. Okay. Fixed an issue where enemies with the vortex FX would deal damage through immunity. As well as an issue where the elixir of expertise was reducing resource cost by 10% instead of displayed 20% value. As well as an issue where the damage bonus from the Paragon Subdue Glyph would be applied to any target instead of only vulnerable targets. An issue where the Barbarian's Whirlwind ability would briefly stop channeling when a cooldown skill was cast using it. Fixed an issue where the guaranteed overpower buff from the Barbarian's Earth Strikers aspect would be consumed upon gaining any other buff. Fixed an issue where the player character would freeze when using the Rogue Shadow Step skill if used outside the range of the intended target, as well as where the player could not rotate when casting a channeled skill if using a one-handed weapon with no offhand item equipped, or where the Curse Scrolls and Fields of Hatred had a lower cooldown than the displayed 5-minute cooldown, or where aspects that deal flat damage and printed through the Codex of Power scaled with player level instead of item power. Fixed an issue where the Necro Shadow Mages weren't applying extra shadow damage through the Shadow Blight key passive. How do you even know if it's not really being applied? Sometimes it's hard to tell. Fixed an issue where cheat death effects would not trigger if you died while mounted. Well then, that's a way to go. Quests and dungeons. Fixed an issue where a traversal wouldn't appear during the blind eye quest blocking progression you see the irony in that one it wouldn't appear during the blind eye as long as you got one good eye you should have been able to see it fixed an issue where the mother's judgment enemy would spawn before the player entered the encounter during the whispers from the past quest as well as an issue where quest progress would be blocked if the player used the town portal during a specific sequence Various other issues that prevented progression from multiple quests or where the Forgotten Depths dungeon had one fewer prisoner to release than intended. An issue where teleporting to Jumanji during the Witch of the Wastes quest would force the player to drop a vial of Quicksilver despite the town being an, being an allowed area for the quest. Fixed an issue where the Cultist Refuge Howling Warren and Luban's Rest Dungeons couldn't be completed if the Butcher appeared and was not killed, as well as where Treasure Goblin slain and Nightmare Dungeons with the Death Pulse affix would deal significantly more damage than intended with its post-death explosion. It's thinking, bitch, you ain't taking my loot. Fixed an issue where the Mirage Quest wouldn't properly be completed. UI. Fixed an issue where the QR code used for account linking on console was improperly sized, which made scanning it difficult as well as where the imprint cost of legendary aspects would be inaccurately displayed or where players on console would be unable to navigate the shop after using the buy more platinum button or where the upgrade glyph tab wouldn't close after moving away from the awakened glyph stone or where a skill unlocked by item contribution did not have an assigned skill button in its tooltip or where trading a partial stack while playing with a controller would display a full stack in the tooltip or where the weekly reward cash for defeating a world boss would display as available if there was an active whisper for defeating a boss, even when the cash had already been claimed previously. Miscellaneous fixed an issue where the NPC Arlo couldn't be interacted with, or where the Fields of Hatred Killer cosmetic set was missing helmets for Druid, Necro, and Rogue, as well as an issue where the cost of the Sturdy Saddle cosmetic from the Stable Vendor would scale with the player character's level. Fixed an issue where players could lure the seething abomination boss in the Alzuda Fields of Hatred Zone to a location where they could damage it, but it couldn't damage them. Smart if you ask me. As well as where mount cosmetics would not properly display if applied while actively mounted, or where the camera would pan from the point of death back to the respawn point instead of instantly moving for players in local co-op 
or where the player and NPC would disappear during a dialogue sequence if the player was actively under the effect of Conduit Shrine. Demonic trickery strikes again. Various localization fixes, other interface and accessibility improvements, further stability, performance, and visual improvements across all platforms, as well as an issue where transmogs on offhand items for sorcerers would reset upon performing any inventory action. What about for my druid, the two-handed mace? Every time I swap a weapon quickly, it removes the transmog. Gameplay adjustments, Helltide chests can now drop unique items. The bosses, Venard, Brawl, and Chichia, have had their health pools and damage output reduced. The cap for crafting materials has been increased from 999 to 9999. That's it. As always, if you liked the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm. If you didn't like the video, go ahead, give it a thumbs down, and as always, I'll bend it in half, twist it, break it off in your ass. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, naturally, that would be great. But if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care, and maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.